Hey everyone, welcome to another blog. I'm about to start a seller call, a series that I do every single week live where I do some uh, analytics of some calls that I've done that week. Now this is the first week back since uh, the holidays and I haven't really done any calls in the last couple of weeks other than today. I have two fairly interesting things that I did today. Uh, one is communicate with Pam, a seller that um, we closed a few deals. Uh, we closed a deal with on the 29th of December. The one I actually uh, I discussed yesterday, her uh, her 11 unit. She has a 12 unit that she's trying to get us uh, to buy. That's under contract. That she's trying to negotiate for her to get a couple bucks to to do. I'm going to talk about that call in just a second when I start up the call live. And. Uh, I'm going to also talk about um, something that I, I discussed with Yehuda, another student of mine, uh, that is trying to buy a property in Ohio. So there's some concerns with that property, and I wanted to go over what I discussed with Yehuda today uh, in a coffee shop. I snuck out of my uh, parents' place to, um, since they have no internet, to um, to make that work. So um, both are very interesting um, opportunities. Uh, and the angle that I'm going to be discussing with Yehuda is actually quite interesting as well um, and how we're going to be taking over someone's debt, giving them cash basically to save their life uh, or their spouse's life, I should say. Uh, they have a very rare degenerative disease. Uh, they are going to Israel to get it treated. It's an extremely expensive treatment and they need $100,000 over their mortgage in order to do this. And we're happy to do it. The numbers work, but they don't work if the mortgages stay where they are and how they are. So there's uh, some discussion as to how we're going to make that happen. So I'm going to start the seller call, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, enjoy the call, and uh, we'll take it from there. And here we go. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the seller call, the call where I get to communicate with sellers, and you get to listen and hopefully learn a couple things on how to uh, communicate how to negotiate, how to help other people, and to make the world a better place through the exciting world of real estate, no matter where you are in the world. I am in Canada right now, uh, visiting my parents for the new year. I will be back in the saddle in my uh, humble abode in Florida uh, at the end of the week, but pretty much as long as I have a laptop and a positive attitude, I can pretty much do anything. Uh, I'm going to play a call today that uh, I did uh, earlier today in a uh, coffee shop. Uh, working on a deal that uh, with a seller that we've already closed a deal with, actually. Uh, if you are following me at all on Facebook or on any social media sites or on my YouTube channel, um, you can see the blog that I, I did on this yesterday. Uh, Kim, Kim uh, scooped up this property at the end of last year. Last day of the year, under the wire, we had to close by the end of the year, and we did, and uh, made Kim some money and uh, made everyone happy. And, of course, the seller happy as well, so everyone's... Uh, Yippee, Kaye, you uh, super happy. So, um, so that's good. Well, happy New Year, I should say. Let's make 2017 the best one ever. Uh, and of course, the only way to do that is not by talking about it. Um, everyone has New Year's resolutions, and most people don't keep them. It's because it's very easy to talk, a lot harder to do. You guys should be busting ass and listening to these calls every single week, and holding yourself accountable to make sure you're on the right path, on the right track, doing what you're supposed to be doing and marketing like crazy and negotiating like crazy in order to get the best possible deal. So make sure that you're on the right path, uh, market as much as possible, uh, especially if you want to do when get in the real estate business and do what you're supposed to be doing because it is all about marketing, it is all about negotiation, uh, and it's about negotiating the deals to the right price. A, uh, a 20 cap, 25 cap, 30 cap, uh, these high returns don't, there's no tree, there's no store where you go in and go, oh look, I just found a 20 cap. Uh, those go like this. Uh, you have to earn them, basically meaning that you have to communicate with the seller uh, and communicate, 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 and create it through good negotiation, good posture, good maneuvers and counter maneuvers, and uh, that is the way to create uh, some some fantastic passive income for yourself and your family and generations to come, which is what this is all about, is how to create a fantastic passive income stream to get you to where you want to be as quickly as possible. So uh, I'm going to uh, first welcome a whole bunch of people here to the new year. Uh, I'm sure you are all as excited as I am to get to a new seller call series for 2017. Let's see who's on the call right now. Uh, Alex, uh, nice to see you. Alex, by the way, and John, uh, father and son team, spoke to them earlier today. Uh, they've got a deal in Dallas cooking, 
uh, sorry, in uh, Texas, I should say, not in Dallas, just outside of Houston. Uh, they got a smoking hot deal uh, cooking where they're taking over debt and basically coming in with a little bit of cash and walking in with about $30,000 a year in passive income. Dan's 22 years old. John must be very proud of his dad. And uh, they're working on a couple deals that are pretty smoking. And another deal, I think, that has a $70,000 a year income that they're picking up for less than three hundred, so it's well over 20 cap as well uh john came to success reflex with his son and uh proud of those two they're just busting ass they were haunting me during my vacation um incessantly love you both but uh every day i was getting a whatsapp from them hey let's go let's go let's get this deal done so i admire their uh their tenacity andrew good to see you out of the uk carrie as well out of winnipeg carolyn nice to see you toronto Chris, I hope you're well. Christina, nice to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Success Reflex. Cyril, was nice to see you at Success Reflex. No, I didn't see you at Success Reflex. I get you mixed up, and I'm sorry, Cyril, I saw you in uh, at the commercial boot camp. Eric, I hope everything's going well. George, good to see you, man. I think it's the first time you're on this call. Uh, Gerald, nice to see you. Gina, hope you're well. Hopefully you close that deal in Ohio. Uh, those of you last year that were tuning in, I, I basically scolded Gina to almost tears. Jeffrey, good to see you. We're going to be back in the saddle next week. I know Jeffrey was at Success Reflex as well. Man, all sorts of great people here. Mark, nice to see you as well. He owns a mobile home park in uh, in um, in uh, Arkansas. Uh, Nick, uh, nice to see you. Uh, he's out of Montreal. Gosh, we got a full house tonight. Uh, Wendy out of Ottawa. We should uh, uh, meet for dinner before I leave or lunch. Hopefully you have time for me and we can we can work things out. So all sorts of great people here on the call. And I'm looking forward to some great results for you this year. And again, uh, results are not created by talking about them. Our results are created by actually getting shit done. Um, hunkering down, marketing, not getting frustrated. Uh, it's going to get hard. It's supposed to be hard. Lean into the pain. Uh, it's You're, you're going to do things that are uncomfortable. And you got to get through the hard times in order to get to the good times. So listen, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And unfortunately, people quit when it gets uh, when the going gets tough. And uh, you know the saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, which means uh, you, you got to get going when it gets tough. And uh, it's 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 sometimes it's a grind, but it's worth it. In fact, Nick started about a year ago. Uh, he's about to close with uh, Ralph and um, Ralph and uh, and Rod. Uh, they're, uh, they're a group of three guys that did this uh, together out of Montreal. Uh, they're about to close one of the largest deals uh, I've seen, uh, and I don't want to jinx it, but they should close this week, and they'll have uh, close to 150 units in one, uh, in one transaction, um, which is basically going to, uh, they're instant millionaires as soon as that closes, and uh, basically um, an extremely creative deal. I'm very proud of them. I'll be doing an interview with them if it closes. Uh, they've done extremely well uh, for themselves so far. Want to get you know too much uh, too much kudos because it'll go to their head and I don't want big egos when it comes to my students. I want them to, I want you to stay humble. Okay, so um, you guys are just killing it, doing well. Asking you know you're doing what I ask you to do and you're getting the results, which is great. So let's uh, just roll up our sleeves here and get to the uh, the good parts, which is um, deals. Um, I hope you guys are are awesome. Uh, all sorts of well wishes. Marie's always nice to see you. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Uh, Sam, nice to see you as well. Uh, good day, good day, Graham. Hope you're well. I'm excited to see you at Success Reflex as well. Uh, Kim, congratulations again. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, Kim, uh, Kim is just doing well. She's a Success Reflex. Spoke to her about her yesterday. And I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be uh, talking about Kim every day, I promise. I'm just really proud of her from, uh, from where she is to where she's come. <clears throat> it's been great. Okay, so uh, let's get on the, this deal here, which is Pam, which is uh, basically the, uh, the seller that uh, Kim had negotiated with. Uh, the deal had to close by the end of December, which was last month. Uh, or they would lose the property. So this was a pre-foreclosure sale. Um, the, she had a series of properties that were uh, cross-collateralized, meaning that if she did not sell this by the end of the month, she would lose quite a bit of, quite a bit of assets. Uh, she had done a business with a couple people that promised that they could close, but no one could actually ever close. Um, so Kim wanted to use her contract. Uh, her contract would actually prohibit her from pro prohibit us from actually closing. So a lot of beginner investors don't know which contracts to use. Um, we have to use our contracts, our terms, our way of doing things, or things won't go well. You have to stay in control, just like driving a car. If you drive a car or a motorcycle and you lose control, you're going to crash. So it's important to know exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it. So we actually ended up closing that deal, which was fantastic. Um, good for Kim. 
made some cash there. Made, um, I think she got her wire for $20,000 today. So high five on that. Very nice. $20,000 on her first real estate transaction. Um, when she's been at it for a year, attended success reflex. And then less than 30 days later, made 20 grand. So good for her. I'm very proud of you for that. Um, that's always a good thing to hear. And the seller has another property, which is a 17 unit. And another, uh, another property from a uh, sort of a person that she's trying to wholesale to or from uh, to us uh, that's a 12 unit. So we're going to discuss that. Uh, this call was done in an extremely noisy coffee shop. I'm not. I'm still technically supposed to be on vacation. So uh, forgive me if the noise is not as good as it should be uh, or sorry, as quiet as it should be. But uh, you get the gist of the twist here. Uh, and there are two things I'm going to be talking about. I had two interesting conversations today. Uh, number one is with Pam. Number two is with Yehuda, who has a uh, property that is, um, he's trying to buy, trying maybe not to buy or buy, uh, that's in Ohio that has three mortgages on it. And uh, I gave him some insight today that I think all of you should really listen to, because I think it'll really help you if you're an advanced student on how to get around some interesting, um, interesting deals. Uh, that will create equity for you or create a better deal for you. All right, so let's listen to Pam right now. Hello. Hey, Pam, it's Marco. Hi, Marco, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Glad we were able to uh, to close it as promised. Oh, yes, thank you. It, it was definitely on pins and needles, so thank you so much for making that happen. Well, I, uh, when I promise something, I generally like to keep my promise. I can, anyway. Good. <laughs> Again, guys, it's noisy. Forgive me. Um, I will try to translate if there's something that I feel that you don't understand or can't hear. So you have others. So basically, I'm uh, I'm I'm just just the first time I've talked to her since the closing. Uh, she's been texting me nonstop. She has this other property she needs to close. Uh, she basically is selling it for three thousand dollars, a seventeen unit. I'm going to say this very carefully. She is closing, and I'm no bullshit. She's closing a seventeen unit for $3,000 in back taxes. That's it. So she owes back taxes and there is a process where we can buy or make a payment arrange arrangement for the back taxes and actually get a 10 year variance or 10 year abatement, meaning we don't have to pay property taxes for the next 10 years if we can make good on these two years of property taxes. So I'm trying to get all the information from her to do this. Because could you imagine buying a property that's for just back taxes Making a payment arrangement so you actually take care of the city and at the same time them uh, giving us a 10-year abatement or 10-year credit for taking a property that's basically a piece of crap, piece of shit, totally terrible property. It needs a lot of rehab. And because we're rehabbing it, because we're changing uh, or making the community better, they give us 10 years of, um, of paying no property taxes. So that'll make our NOI huge. It'll be a huge win for us to be able to do that. So... Very, very, very interesting. I've never done it before. I uh, know nothing about it. I'm asking her to uh, give me some more information. I'm still learning on this. This is not something that I'm super whiz-bang savvy guru-ish about. Uh, I'm a student in this case because I'm always learning something. This is something I love about the real estate business is if you're always a student, you're always going to learn something. Uh, yeah, this, the, the, yeah, the uh, I went to Canada to, uh, to I was actually out of the country, uh, I was in Bora Bora for a little bit, and then uh, I came back to see my parents, so I'm in, uh, I'm in Canada right now, and, um, sorry, it's a little noisy, I'm in a coffee shop, and, uh, I'm not back till Thursday, so I can't really initiate a whole lot on the 17 minute until Thursday, Friday, so we probably won't be able to post it until next week, hopefully that's okay. You probably won't be able to close until next week, you said? Beginning of next week, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right, as long as you can close pretty quickly on that, um, that would be great. Yes. I'm working on your other property that I'm trying to get a wholesale to you. All right, so what I, what, I, what I like her attitude already is she's already trying to find me another property. And she's not saying it's a property that she has, it's your property. So she's already in her head. Uh, resolved herself that whatever she gives us is fine. We're buying another one from her, 17 unit, for three grand. And I know you don't believe me because I wouldn't believe me if I said it because 3,000 for a 17 unit sounds literally retarded. Who would sell a 17 unit for $3,000? I don't even believe it when I'm saying it. So, you know, why should you believe it when I say it? But it's, you'll see, she's actually just wants three grand for it. That's it.
Nice. Um, that's similar to the 11 flex. Uh, nice. So um, the only the only thing is, though, he I just got finished talking to him today, and he's um, in the middle of remodeling. Like I told you, wasn't as good a shape as mine was. So he's he's wanting 200,000. I tried to keep I tried to keep him at a one. All right, so he wants 200,000 is what he wants right now. Where's my calculator? So let's see what these. Um, now, what I what I enjoy about people that are in the uh, that don't know commercial that well is they don't necessarily know how to calculate values of property as well as they should. So, the the average rent in that area is about 450, and there's 12 units. All right, so that's 5400 dollars a month times 12 12 months is 64,800. Um, 0.6, so it's 40% cost, so you're looking at a 38,800, so we're gonna, let's call it a $35,000, uh, let's take out a little bit extra cash here, so it's about 35,000, which means the property is worth about 350,000. If we were to buy that for 70% of its value, we're looking at 245. If we can get this for 200, so, 30, so 35,000 is what it makes, divide that by 200, what's our cap rate? It's a 17.5% cap rate. So is 17.5 cap good? Absolutely. It's a great cap. Absolutely great cap. So um, now if there's if they're not individually metered, then it's going to be a little bit less than that. If it's uh, if it's individually metered, it'll be a little bit more than that. So let's let's figure this out. Five. Obviously, I still need a wholesale fee in right, that. Right, 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 of so I don't know. And and he actually did get a full appraisal a while ago. It was last year or something, which I have the full appraisal. Uh, the full appraisal says two thirty or two thirty three. It's very similar in my building. So it is a twelve plus. The, the plus side to that unit, I guess he's saying, is they just started. Again, you don't know the area, but Shaker Heights. I guess is building across the street and like I said it was kind of like that middle ground area where it's like you know a minute down the road there's nice high end houses on the other side it's not that great but it is good that right across the street they're spending money right. so that's good mm -hmm. so that means that things are in motion for that one so that's a good thing okay um, so for 200000 not a bad I mean it's not like Awesome, awesome. You know, like I said, the appraisal comes at two thirty. It's probably going to be worth more because it is on the border of Shaker so and it does have that potential to grow a little bit better than Eddie would have. Do you, you know, know what I'm saying? Do you, so do you know? I think come in I think you'll be, be a little bit uh, safer on the on the growth of potential on that one. Do you know what the uh, Do you know what the uh, the income is on that right now? Any idea? Uh, it, he's not getting as much as he should, and again, he's only, I, he, it's a 12 unit, they're smaller units, they're not as big as mine, but I still think there should be no reason why they're only bringing in 400 or, I think he's only asking 400 a month, which is crazy ridiculous low. Mm -hmm. So, you could definitely increase to 450 easily, if not, get it, if you do a full rehab, you can go get Section 8 approved, you know, Section 8, which then you're in the 500, 525 range. All right, so if we were to Section 8 rehab this, and I don't know what it would take to rehab it. Again, this is the first conversation I have with this young lady uh, about this project. She's trying to find us more deals. She has other, uh, she knows other people that are selling their apartments, uh, their, their buildings. I closed on one, um, uh, you know, on, on the, last, the last day of the month. Uh, we made a promise to close by the end. We got this under contract. Uh, for those of you that hadn't watched uh, my video yesterday, um, that's on YouTube. Um, if you don't, you should. Um, I'll be blogging every day so you guys can see what I do on a daily basis and how you can. Um, basically, it's like a mini seller call every single day. And I basically go over what I'm doing and how I'm, you know, the, the deals that are going through and not go through. And even the deals that totally screw up are the students that just don't do what I ask them to do and me yelling at them. Be entertaining for you. So if if we actually converted this to if we converted this to a Section Eight, we're looking at a forty three thousand dollar a year income, which is a four hundred thirty thousand dollar building um, that we're picking up for two hundred. So it's well over a twelve cap. So at forty three two hundred, uh, divide that by two hundred thousand, um, you're looking at a tw a twenty one point six cap. So uh, that would be a extremely good deal at two hundred thousand. Now, yes, she wants a wholesale fee, 
Um, but I, is it worth paying someone so a, a couple bucks to get a $200,000 building that we could potentially do Section 8 with? Now, I don't know how much a Section 8 is going to cost to, to, to change. Um, Section 8 is has, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's government subsidized housing. And the rules are there has to be screen on the windows. Uh, there has to be no holes in the walls. Uh, there, you know, the, the, the thermostat has to work. Uh, the, the, you know, it has to be a safe, it has to be a safe, safe environment, uh, for people to live in. If it's not a safe environment for people to live in, if it's not a safe environment for people to live in, then you're not section eight approved. But if you're section eight approved, the money comes straight from the government, which is pretty freaking sweet. So they go straight into your bank account, whether you like it or not, you can't stop the money. It comes in period. So it's, uh, it's a great, uh, you know, it's, it's just great. So would I prefer to sectionate it? Absolutely. So the question is, is how much can we get it for? Um, and if she's trying to wholesale it, what I prefer to do is actually see if there's a mortgage on the property. And if there is a mortgage on the property, take over that mortgage and give some cash. So that way our cash on cash is even higher. We're doing, um, you know, we're doing much, much better. So, you know, but at least, at least uh, you should be able to get that minimum cash. You should be able to get 450 maybe even 475 especially with uh, the area kind of growing. Gotcha. And, um, but all day long, I would have been charged. I would have been charging 450 So he's definitely low on his number. And how about how much? Um, and he doesn't have, and he doesn't have a boiler system there, which is another nice thing. You're not going to have as much overhead with that boiler. I think he only has like a furnace. I think they have furnaces in each unit. Gotcha. So, and the, it's individually electrically ordered, or is it? Does he pay? For I'm sorry. Power? What's that? Does he pay for power, or who? Uh, Did, no. They, the tenants pay. The tenants pay. The pet tenants pay the power. I mean, there's. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so, and the water is paid. Um, the water is paid by the tenants too. And I'll get to that. And like I said, he's a pain in the neck. He's a pain in the neck to deal with, but if. One thing that he wanted me to produce was that we closed up on this deal. And obviously, I know you can, you know, make sure you get some kind of letter together. So as soon as you get a letter together, because uh, he's had so much trouble with me closing the deal, he doesn't trust, he doesn't put, he doesn't, he doesn't believe me as far as he could throw me because I've been promising to close on this property for a few months. I understand, I understand. Okay, so uh, if, if you're straining yourself to hear, uh, basically we made a promise to Kim to close by the end of the month, not to Kim, pardon me, to uh, to, to Pam. We did, um, and and uh, there's a lot of people that are that tie a property, and which is, I think, done with this other seller uh, for a lot less, like 190, 180, um, a lot lower numbers. She hasn't been able to close at all on any number, so she's lost face with him. So the advantage of having access to either cash or people that can close is you have instant, obviously, uh, you know, you, you, you get instant uh, uh, credibility, which is extremely important, extremely important. Because I had so much heart, because I had so much trouble with these hard money lenders, it's kind of put me in a bind with him. I understand. So, but as long as you can get a letter together for him, I'll show him the closing on this particular deal, even though that's probably not going to be your end guy, uh, whoever you partner up with. The yeah. point is, he just wants to know it's going to close quickly. Right. And, yeah, Dan was going to so. be a partner. Yeah, actually, Dan came to uh, as a. I had like four or five people that actually came up to me and said I'd, uh, that are that have cash that want to partner with me in the deals that I have. And uh, this guy just basically at the last minute said I didn't want to do it. He he he, uh, he couldn't get hold of his attorney. He got all cold feeted and instead of just losing the deal, I said, you know what, just take it all and we'll you know we'll deal with it. We'll get it on the next one. I didn't want to I didn't want to argue with the guy over a few thousand bucks. I just you know just take the deal and. You know, pardon the expression, but right. just fuck it. Okay. You know, it's, life is short. Let's just get you taken care of and and uh, make sure you're happy. Right. And as long as you can, like yeah. I said, it, 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 
this particular property is going to be a good one for you, I think. Can we do it under two hundred? If I if I see. no, he's he's a real pain in the neck. He I think he owes one fifty five. One fifty five. He's doing remodel. I love it when I when I when I don't even ask what people owe and they just tell me, uh, which is dangerous, obviously, as if you've been following me for any period of time. Uh, if they owe one fifty five, then instantly I know that we can probably take over their debt and just give them forty five k. So. In this case, uh, if it makes thirty-five thousand, uh, and let's say that let's say his his interest rate is ten percent, so I want to go over uh, sort of a worst case scenario. All right, so let's say he owes ten percent. If it's better, great. It is what it is. If he owes one fifty-five at ten percent, obviously at ten percent, his interest payment would be fifteen thousand five hundred. Thirty-five thousand minus fifteen thousand. All right, obviously this is very easy math. Is twenty k. So if I put in 45k, so the 20k for those of you that haven't followed me is $20,000 is what I'm going to be left with after debt service. So if the property makes $35,000 a year net, if I convert to section 8, obviously it'll be a lot more, but let's say it's just at 450, the rents are 450. We're going to net $35,000 a year for those of you that still don't get the math, it's 450 times 12, there's 12 units. Times 12 months there's 60% vacancy. I'm mean, 60%. Uh, can we keep 60%? We have 40% cost for uh, taxes, insurance, um, vacancy, all that shit. We're left with 38,880. I'm rounding down to 35,000. So we have some extra cushion. All right. So we're 35,000 conservative. And if we put in 20K, sorry, if we put in 20K, which, uh, what am I talking about? If we put in 45K, which is what he wants. And we make 20k, so we put 20k in. Uh, we get 20k per month, per year. Pardon me, 20k per year, 20k per year, not per month. Divide that by the 45,000 that we actually put in gives us our cash on cash return of 44%. So that would be even better. So we give the guy 45,000, he bails, and we get $20,000 a year after debt service. So we're making 44% on our money. There's no way that any bank on this planet is going to give us a 44% return at all. The stock market's not going to give me 44% at all. So it's it's a much better leveraged return if we focus it uh, that way, and it's it's actually quite easy then to find a partner uh, that has the cash. Why use my own money when I don't have to? Uh, we can actually find someone that has you know forty five thousand that would like to make a nice return, and uh, boom, we split the deal with um, with with that individual. So pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, he owes one fifty five, but he's doing remodeling. I and he wasn't doing remodeling, and I wasn't gonna pay. Um, I think I was at one ninety, but I was cashing him out the one fifty five right away. But it, that was just to pay the debt. And then he, like I said, he's a pain in the neck. If you want to deal with it, it's cash. You know, right? You're, what do you, you're, what do you do? You'll have a real hard time because I've been fighting with him for months <laughs> on this deal for months. And even at 190, he was like, and now that he's putting money into it, he's right. not going to touch it. What do you do? Too. So let me ask so. you this: What do you do? What do you? What do you allow us to take over his debt and give us give him 45,000 cash? What do you allow you to do? What I'm sorry? Take over his debt and give him. Could you say that again? Take over his debt. Leave the debt where it is. We'll pay oh. him 45,000. We'll pay all the closing costs. And we'll just pay him forty five k cash. That we can close in like a week. All right. So the question I have to you is: Do you do you think it's wise for her to ask these questions, or do you think it's better if we put something together and then give it to her and say, "Here's what I want you to do." Which do you think would have a better result? Say, "Hey, you go and you here's what I want you to say to the seller when she's clearly never done this before," or is it better for us to put something together and for her to present it to the seller with a with a you know with a proof of funds of some kind or you know, with uh, basically a, a couple of HUDs of deals that we've closed the last 45, 45 days. We have tons. We probably students, uh, with students uh, deals, we probably did over a thousand units uh, in 2015. Uh, just an incredible amount of units. Um, pr we, we moved a lot of, we did a lot of property. I have to calculate exactly how many dollars amount of property that we bought last year uh, and how many units we actually were involved in. But it was clearly, it was well over a thousand um, for sure, for sure. So I have to figure that out, but I have tons and tons and tons of, uh, tons of stuff in 2016. So not 15, but 16. So, um, it's way better for us to put it together. So that's exactly what we're going to do.
That's easy. Gotcha. Okay. You want to ask him? Yeah, I, I, yeah, we can, what I want you to do, you have to put it in writing because he's Japanese. He's very hard to understand. Okay. So just uh, put it in writing that you would pay the first mortgage, which is approximately... You're saying so we're actually able we're gonna to take, take we're, over the one. We'll just take over. Yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah, we're just gonna take over the first, uh, and then refinance mm-hmm. them out within. Once we've owned it for about six months, we can refi at about four percent. So okay, um, it's and it's, explain that explain that in the piece of paper to him, and yes. then it should be like I said. He he's he's one of those that don't be too surprised if it doesn't go that way. He probably won't just I because, think. like I said, he's heard so many other creative deals with me. And not just me, but my other lenders. It wasn't me talking. It was like, oh, well, I got this deal. You know, kind of like what you're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. So don't be surprised if he doesn't go for it. <laughs> but okay. he will go for he will go for the deal to sell the property, and um, that he will as long as he knows he can close it within a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. I'll I'll put a ABC uh, like we can do it A this way, B this way, C this way, and uh, that'd be perfect. And the- yeah, so the uh, it's called a multiple offer strategy. So give offer one, offer two, offer three. And if you give three offers, it doesn't dawn on them that they don't have to take any. They usually pick one of those three. And all three offers will be fantastic no matter what. So it could be a, I haven't thought about this through yet, but offer number one could be $190,000 cash, $185,000 cash, close within three weeks. Uh, offer two would be take over your debt, give you $45,000 in cash. Offer number three is maybe even pay you ten, uh, pay you two hundred and ten thousand, uh, but we'll give you twenty thousand dollars now and thirty thousand dollars over the next five years at X amount per month. So, um, you know, there's a lot of ways that we could put this together where it's beneficial for us and beneficial for the seller. Because obviously, if we did a twenty thousand dollars down and we made it at a twenty thousand, we get a hundred percent cash on cash return uh, from the twenty thousand that we give, and we get twenty thousand dollars net after payment of the mortgage. We did that calculation earlier in the call. So um, it allows us to really make 100% cash on cash. So that's that would be our best bet, is how can we get in as thin as possible to make the best return uh, by, the end of the, um, by the end of the deal. So it's really creating a, a deal structure that allows us to win, the seller to win, and the investor to win if you're not the one putting in the money. Because you always have to think, how can I get the person that's putting in the cash the highest possible return, so they want to invest as much money as possible, tell their friends about how much money they just made, and make sure that they're happy, they're secure, and that they're in an okay spot. It's always, how can we make the seller happy? How can we make the investor happy? And we're the last one to eat at the trough, really. Um, As long as those two are happy and there's some leftover for us, it makes sense to do it. Uh, Because basically then we're making an infinite return since we're just the transactional engineers in this. We found the investor, we found the seller, we put everything together, and we make money out of thin air, which is fantastic. You can choose whichever one he wants and then take it from there. All right, and I'll send you over some info on it. So and can, uh, That'd be great. Yeah, send me over some info on that. Can you also send me over any info on the and tax? And the only thing I'm going to need you to... Sorry, go ahead. On the, on the Milverton tax, uh, on the property I'm talking about right now? Uh, no, I'm, uh, on the one that you're talking about, send me as much as you can, but also the, the tax info as far as we had talked about um, going to a payment plan with the city over the next two years. Oh, for Colonnade? Yes, and seeing what we can work out there, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Anything you can find on that so I can get that initiated, because if we can work out a payment plan with the city over the next two years, that would be way better. And then I can just... And then if, if we can do that, I'll just give you the cash that we agreed on. Like you wanted, I think, 3000 I'll just give you 3000 and I'll deal with the city directly and be done. Yes, you heard right. She wants $3,000 for a 17-unit apartment building. Granted, it needs a lot of rehab. It needs about $150,000 in rehab. But Section 8 rents are five fifty for that area. So five fifty times 17 units times 12 months times 0.6 is $67,000. It's a $670,000 building, all right? $670,000 building for $3,000 plus the rehab cost of one fifty. dollars um, It's pretty sick. So divide that by $150,000 plus $3,000, but it's basically a 40 cap. It's retarded, all right? It's super, super amazing. Plus we have to, okay, yes, I forgot the, the back taxes, which uh, have to be paid as well. I don't know the exact amount of back taxes, but it's significant. 
Um, so it might take our 40 cap down to a 30 cap, but shit, 30 cap is still fantastic. Okay, so it's 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 still it's still ridiculous. It's it's a ridiculous ridiculous deal. Uh, it's basically getting your money back every three years. And uh, once you leverage the return, meaning once we actually put a mortgage on it, uh, it's basically free money, which is fantastic. Okay, so um, hopefully that all makes sense. Anyway, oh, I'm not finished. Uh, that, well, if, if through uh, the company bought them out, uh, which is co to, I don't know if you've heard of them, they're the ones that buy all the stuff from the city, uh -huh. the taxes. Um, and I'll I'll send you uh, I'll send I'll send you a picture of that actually I'll uh, send you a picture of it now so this way because I'll be gone actually no problem for yeah. the next five days no problem no problem and then I'll call I'll call them when I have another spare moment and then uh, it's like tomorrow I'll call them tomorrow and, and then we'll see what we can do to get that started and put some cash into your pocket. That would be great because, like I said, I'm still, even though that deal helped the situation, I'm still in. Yeah, I, anything uh, I can fine. do to help that, you out. That extra 3000 that extra 3000 is still going to, I still deal with some repercussions on Eddie Road that I have to, I have to pay some uh, huge, several thousand dollar bill. So, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to not get in trouble yeah, <laughs> there. Anything I can do to help you out that makes sense. And it's not something that I want to leave. Well, let's, let's do a lot of deals right, together thanks, and thanks, put some money in your pocket. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Again, $3,000. You heard it like three times. Um, super ridiculous. I, uh, that'll be the, the, the unit that I've paid the least amount for for the most amount of units, for sure. Now, yes, there's a tax abatement, and yes, the, the place is trashed. If you look on my Facebook, uh, it's completely trashed. There's actually a skating rink inside the house, and there's icicles coming out of the ceiling on two floors and dead raccoons. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a pretty picture at all, but it is what it is. And if it was pretty, uh, it would be selling for 300,000, not 3000. So there's the difference. We're taking the risk. All right. So, um, I'm not sure if you guys have, uh, any comments on that, but pretty cool. It's a pretty good beginning of the year, I would think. Um, next I want to talk about a, a situation with Yehuda. I don't know if he's on the call, but I'll unmute him if he is. Is Yehuda on today? No, he's not. He usually is, but he's not. Okay, well, um, Yehuda actually came to my house um, for a success reflex, and he struggled for almost a year not getting any deals. And I was like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Like, smart guy, just couldn't figure out how to... There was a missing ingredient in what he was saying and how, communicating. Anyway, we... We spent time uh, three days together. He got it. He 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 got it figured out, and he got these la he got these two deals actually from the last um, the last the last one that uh, that he attended. And one of them is a uh, is a property that generates about sixty thousand dollars a year. So uh, we're still in due diligence on this. So uh, it, it makes about sixty thousand dollars a year. So you know the property value is about six hundred thousand. Now the challenge with this deal is it's quite remote. And some of you have encountered this problem that I work with, and some of you who don't work with me who are trying this on your own um, might have issues later refinancing a, uh, refinancing this property because it's so remote. And if it's too remote, you're not going to be able to find a lender that's going to want to lend you the money. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to find, um, you know, find a find a lender that's wanting to take the risk in a remote area. For those of you that English is not your first language. Remote means in the boonies, in uh, but fuck nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. It's basically the nearest Walmart is 200 miles away, or you know, or or 300 kilometers if we're going to do the conversion. It's you know, it's uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> so if it's too remote, it's it's going to be difficult for management. It's going to be difficult also for uh, for refinancing. Now the the advantage is that there's an there's a an existing loan on this thing. There's actually three loans. All right, so pay attention, guys. I'm going to try to make this as painless as possible. Loan number one is for 130 thousand. It's at 12 percent. All right, so loan number one, 130 thousand at 12 percent. Loan number two is for 90 thousand. All right, it's for 90 thousand. That one is at 12 percent. 
Loan number three is for 30,000 and it's at 5%. So we've got loan number one at 12%, which is 130,000. Loan number two, which is for, uh, for uh, 90,000 at 12%. And loan number three is for 60,000, sorry, 30,000 and totaling uh, whatever that is. So 130 plus 90 was 220 plus 90 plus 30. Sorry, 130 plus 90 plus 30. All right, so you I don't know why I'm I can't do math today. 130 plus 90 is 220 plus 30 is 250. There's $250,000 in loans. Forgive me, I'm clearly I've I'm I have a learning disability when it comes to using my calculator and I have no idea why. All right, so $250,000 in loans. Uh, the thing makes uh, you know makes sixty thousand dollars a year. So if you take a look at this, uh, and the guy wants a hundred thousand dollars to uh, basically save his wife's life, uh, they need to go to Israel for this this very specific operation. It's a hundred thousand dollars to do it. If they don't get a hundred thousand dollars, basically she's going to die. So uh, a terrible, terrible situation. But at the same time, <clears throat> we don't want it, you know it's a terrible situation. But we do we want to inherit a problem uh, and make it our problem? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, if we, you know, if we give the hundred thousand dollars and we can't find management, then we're going to be stuck with the property. It's never going to work out, and we're going to be stuck with these terrible loans. So, the we had suggested that we take over the debt. We had suggested that we take over the LLC. We had suggested all these different things. And today on the call uh, that I had with Yehuda, it was sort of an emergency nine one one. Oh my goodness, things the sky is falling. Call. Uh, he, I, I, I got a little bit more information on these loans. So number one is a 12%. It's coming due. So there's a, there's a due on sale on this, on this thing. All right. So, and it's, there's a balloon basically meaning it's, it's coming due. There's a $90,000 loan, which is not attached to the property, but it's attached to the LLC, which is also coming due. And there's a third mortgage at 5% for 30,000 which is not due, but it's at 5% and it's, it's the old owner that took a second, basically took a third mortgage. And the seller needs 100k. So, with all these loans, I'm I'm thinking, well, here's what we should do: is the first mortgage, the first mortgager is a is a is a hard money lender, private lender, and they're going to take the property back because there's a due on sale, not a due on sale, pardon me. There's a balloon mortgage, meaning that they they're going to take it back, they're going to have to foreclose. It's going to be a pain in the ass, and they're aware of the situation with the wife. So there's some, you know, there's there's obviously a they're aware of what's going on, and they're encouraging this guy to sell the property. The challenge is, is no one wants to buy it, even though the cap rate is really good because it's so remote. It's really in the middle of nowhere. So I suggested that we actually call the lender and say, "Listen, number one, you take back the if you if you take back this this property, you're probably never going to sell it. And you're it's going to be very difficult for you to get your money back. Why don't you just reduce the interest, and we'll just take over the debt." So just do an interest reduction. Instead of charging 12 and gouging, let's make it 8 so it's fair. So And instead of making it interest only, let's make it over 30 years. So we're basically going to renegotiate the terms of the first mortgage. Now, will this happen automatically? No. Could it happen that the, guy, the lender says, go to hell, it's never going to happen? Absolutely. Is it worth a shot? Yes. Is it worth a shot considering that if we don't do this, we won't be able to proceed with the deal because the interest rate's too high? Literally, it makes a nice... It makes a nice return, but with all these mortgages that are coming due, would you give $100,000 on a loan that's about to come due? The answer is absolutely not. Never going to happen. All right? So it's never, never, never going to happen. Why would you give $100,000 to a deal when three months later the loan is due? And it's basically going to go into foreclosure. No matter what you do, it's going into foreclosure, not because, you've not missed a, because you missed a payment, but because there's a balloon mortgage. My own house has a balloon mortgage on it that if it's not paid off by X amount of time, it I will lose the house to the private lender that lent the money because it has to be paid. That's just how it works. And I knew this going in when I bought my house because I got such a great deal on it. And I said, screw it. I'll just pay off the mortgage when it's time. Same thing. So just because the house is in foreclosure doesn't mean you're not making payments. It just means that the mortgage is structured that way. So many people don't know that. So would you give 100K and possibly lose it? The answer is hell no. It's a terrible business move. So the answer to that is we, we, we see if we can renegotiate the first mortgage. I'm actually going to be calling the mortgage 
a company tomorrow, the guy that owns the mortgage, and see if we can restructure that. So I'm going to play that on the next seller call, which is next Tuesday, if if I can get hold of the guy. Good, bad, or ugly, I'm going to, I'm going to broadcast it so you guys can listen to what's going on next week. So that's a plug for next week's call. I'm going to try to get it down to 7%, which is a decent rate uh, for, for, for a holding. Mortgage number two is actually only secured on the LLC, not on the actual property. Now, the property is, the LLC owns the property, but the lien is on the LLC, which means that if the LLC sells the property, guess what? The, L the loan is still on the LLC. So now I can go to the second mortgage holder that owns 90000 at 12%. I say, listen, your lien is on the LLC, not on the mortgage. He's going to lose his wife unless he gets this thing sold. So two choices. One is we'll still pay you the $90,000, but I need you to drop your interest rate from 12% down to 6% or 7%. Or he's going to have to BK the LLC to sell the property, meaning that he's going to lose his entire position. So we're in a very good situation on the second mortgage to be able to hardball the second to save the woman's wife life. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we do this on a regular basis, but shit, this is life and death. And when it's life and death, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm going to give them, obviously, uh, you know, the best solution, which is just lower your interest rate. You're still going to be secured and we'll secure it on the actual asset instead of the, the LLC. You'll still get money coming in. You'll still be owed $90,000. We're not trying to short that. We're just trying to secure it on the property or... We're going to have to do whatever it takes to get this thing out of there to save the woman's life. And the third mortgage, we basically go to the third guy and say, listen, same, you're in third position. You're like the worst lien possible. Um, instead of actually, without even discounting, we could try to discount actually what's owed to him. We probably could. But if we don't want to do that, we say, listen, I'm not paying you any more interest. I'm just going to pay you principal moving forward. So you're not getting any more interest. I'm only going to pay you $30,000. And that $300 a month that you're getting, it's going directly off principal for the rest of the loan. So we can negotiate the first, the second, and the third. If we can negotiate those three things, we can step in. And then, and then Yehuda gets a property that doesn't have a 12% interest, but a 7% interest on a, something that has a 22 cap. So he has no danger of having it foreclosed. Um, he doesn't need to get it refied because there's no balloons coming up and it creates a much better opportunity for him, a much safer opportunity for the seller, allowing him to sell, buy, sell the property to a seller that can actually really help his spouse. Because unless we do something with those second mortgages, the third mortgage and the first mortgage with those interest rates, it doesn't make sense for Yehuda to buy it. So Yehuda could say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not going to do it. But there's no one else that's going to be able to buy this thing in the next 90 days. The thing has been on the market for over six months, and this woman needs help now. So the best way to help this young lady that needs her immediate, immediate medical attention is to, uh, is to cater to the first, the second, and the third, renegotiate the terms, play hardball if necessary, do whatever it takes, allowing us to step into the deal, allowing us to take over the mortgages, allowing us to communicate directly with these private mortgages and do the right thing for the, for the young lady that needs the help, not necessarily for their pocketbook. And I hope that makes a lot of sense. So, um, and now this is quite advanced. Not everyone's going to necessarily understand that. If, if you guys understand that, if you guys understand it, hit yes on your, uh, you know, hopefully it makes, makes that, that makes sense. Uh, again, we're not doing this to try to screw anyone over. We're not trying to do this to piss anyone off. We're not trying to defraud anyone. Uh, I got a hilarious email the other from someone uh, on last time I discussed about short sales and how this is, you know, un, you know, unethical. Uh, if the lender agrees to it, it's 100% ethical. And again, it's it's all about uh, it's all about asking permission and doing it for the right reasons, allowing the seller, allowing the seller the opportunity to sell to save a spouse is an extremely noble reason and uh, it creates a situation where it went from a deal that can't be done to a deal that 100% can be done and is a win-win-win-win-win for everyone. The, 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 uh, the second mortgage is now secured as opposed to be unsecured. They should have never lent the $90,000 to begin with on the LLC. It should have been done on the property, so they screwed up there. 
uh, it allows the young lady to actually get the uh, operation. It allows Yehuda to have a property and enjoy an over 25 cap, which is fantastic. And um, everyone gets paid on time without any danger of being in foreclosure because the second and the third were in terrible positions with the first um, with with that balloon in the first. So it really makes everyone's life a lot better just by um, you know by doing the right thing. So with the right education, guys, um, you can come up with the right answers. And it goes also uh, with a 7% blended rate with your 250 times 0.07. So you're looking at an interest payment of about $17,500 a year with your $60,000 minus $17.5. You're looking at a net income of $42,000 on his $100,000 investment. So that's a 42% return on his cash, which is fantastic for Yehuda. Leaving it the way it was was a 12% blended rate, I believe. So if we do 12, um, if we do 250 times 12, whoops, 250 times 12, I think it's 300, 250 times 12, yeah, 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 250 times 12, please don't laugh at my terrible, is 30,000, exactly right, uh, he makes 60, it's left with 30. Um, so he's making a lot more, but most importantly, there's no balloon, which means he's hundred thousand dollars is at risk. There is uh, no risk of uh, having to refinance. These are going to be all thirty-year loans, allowing him to uh, the opportunity to sell the property when he needs to, not when he has to, allowing him to um, improve the property when he has to and not when he needs to, and it doesn't paint him into a corner, which is very very important. So. Hopefully that was a good seller call for the first of the year, the first word of the year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, quick plug for Success Reflex. If anyone has uh, is wants to be held hostage in a room for three days, uh, like many of the students that are doing deals, Kim, uh, Yehuda, which I just discussed, uh, deal hasn't closed yet, so don't get too excited. We're still working on those negotiations. It could be the seller say, you know what, the, the lender say, you know what, screw you guys, I'm going to take back the property, and I don't give a shit if this young lady dies because all I care about is money. That could very well happen, which would be a terrible result, but, you know, that happens. Um, it, it, we, we do our best, and sometimes deals die, even though how hard we try, they still die. Um, uh, you know, come to Success Reflex if you can. It's three days at my house. Uh, January is full. That's 20, 21, and 22. Uh, we have February that is available 17, 18, and 19. Uh, that comes with uh, 30 days of my help. You can also get that with three months of my help or a full year of my help, depending on how, how much punishment you want to take. And with more, um, with more education comes better deals, better quality deals, less money out of your pocket. Uh, using other people's money instead of your own and being a lot more sophisticated. The more sophisticated you are, the higher returns you have. Uh, that, like anything else, if you're well-educated, you make a lot more money, and there's a lot to learn in this business. So I'm looking forward to making 2017 the best one ever, not because of you saying it is, but because of the action that you take that goes behind it. Uh, I want you to stop watching things happen. Uh, this isn't like porn where you just watch it and you know have a lot of fun. Uh, the, the, the real estate is a lot more fun doing than it is watching. So uh, I know some of you are really enjoying watching others do well, uh, which is cool, but I really want you to get, get involved, do it, um, get a mentor, get someone that can hold you accountable. Make sure that when you don't do something that week, they give you shit. Uh, they yell at you when you want to quit. They don't let you quit. When you say, you know what, I'm out of here. They don't let you do it. Um, you know, tough love. That's what some of you need. And no matter what, you guys need to start doing it. So you got to do what you got to do. So guys, thanks for being on the call. Um, if you guys are uh, are interested in Success Reflex at all, uh, whether it's in February, we have another one in March. I have one every month. It's the third Friday of every month. So third Friday of every month. Uh, <clears throat> there are exceptions here and there. Send me an email, kembotrust at gmail.com. Kembotrust at gmail.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if, if anyone's interested in success reflex in the future, uh, it isn't cheap, but it's certainly worth it. You'll get a lot of results. That's a guarantee. If you don't get a result, I'll fly you back at my expense back to my house. All right, guys, thanks for being in the call. Appreciate it. Love you a long time. I will see you uh, next week. Same place, same time. Uh, go on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. It's Marco Kozlowski.com. That's Marco Kozlowski. Sorry, Marco Kozlowski on YouTube. And if you guys can, uh, if you guys watch that and share it, if you don't mind, if you know anyone that wants to make money in real estate and do it the correct way, 
uh, you know someone that is tired of sitting at their job and is just miserable, it might be yourself, uh, share whatever content I have. I'd love to be able to help and impact others, not just you. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Ta-ta for now. See ya.